it's really I mean, easy and fast and it assures that you're not in your shoulders or upper chest. Mm -hmm. So you want to be sure that it's slow and deep as you can, that it is coming from the lower rib cage. Um, the nose is best. If you can breathe through your nose, that's best, and everyone here is a nose breather, which is really good. The mouth you use when you're doing athletic work and you need a huge volume of air and you can't quite get it all through your nose in time or as fast as you can. But that means that you're probably in an anaerobic state. So if you're trying to exercise in, a, in an aerobic um, state where your body is getting more oxygen than it is letting go carbon dioxide, then you want to assure that you can still talk when you do your jogging. If you can do, um, when we, what they call that aerobics, when everybody's doing these steps and they're going, <laughs> that's not an aerobic state, but that's okay. You're doing cardio cardio training, which is very valuable, and you're breathing through your mouth and that's fine, but that's not aerobic. It means you're getting more oxygen than you used to, but your exchange is not even at all. Um, what does that do to you when it's not even? Are you storing carbon dioxide? Well, it, well, not storing, well, you could say storing carbon dioxide. It means that your blood cells can't get rid of it fast enough, so there's only so much oxygen they can take in. Mm -hmm. When you get a massage and you've got tension, that is often the detritus. It's both gaseous and uh, fluid in your tissue. That's what makes banding, muscle banding, when you've got muscles stuck together and you kind of flip your thumb over them. Most of us have really good examples of that up here. When you breathe more deeply, that releases that. If, you're, if your garbage truck, which is your blood cells, can't let go of the carbon dioxide fast enough, if there's no place to dump it because we close our landfill, then the garbage trucks just don't have any place to go. So they leave the garbage where it is, in front of our houses, in our tissue, wherever that is. It could be uh, smooth tissue, as in organs, kidneys, liver, pancreas, spleen, that, or it could be the striated tissue that we move with. So we hold tension in the form of um, metabolic waste, in the form of unreleased carbon dioxide, in the form of minerals and toxins that your body needs to get rid of, basically garbage. Um, it's either in the cells or the organs. The more deeply you breathe and the more even your oxygen for carbon dioxide exchange is, the less tension you have. Is that where fatigue comes from? Storing all that stuff? <coughs> yeah, a lot of it. Well, it comes, that's part of it. Fatigue comes from not taking the garbage out. It also comes from just not having enough fuel in the form of oxygen. So if we breathe very shallowly and habitually do that, then the body's not getting enough oxygen. Bill, did you have a comment? I don't understand how you can be fat and lack fuel at the same time. How is that possible? How is that possible? Because the garbage trucks aren't picking it up and we're not using the fuel. So your body's storing this fuel and it just sits there. And there's no hope. <laughs> well, that's possible. Let's see. I need Thanks, to see. Oh, good. Um, that's possible. But except that all you have to do is all you have to do is lay on the floor and do like this and then all your troubles will completely disappear. How's that? <laughs> we have that in writing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carrot. Um, so, so does that make sense about taking out the garbage? It also makes sense in when you're getting complete movement of this vagus nerve, when you're telling your body things are okay, then all systems are go and all the garbage gets taken out. If your body thinks you're under attack in any way, whether or not anything's going out here, out at all, if you're not moving that vagus nerve, your body is not going to take the garbage out because it's on alert. So even though the body figures out how to do things, and it'll do things the best it can, it'll still eliminate waste to a certain degree, and it'll still uh, eliminate and filter your fluids with your kidneys, it'll be functioning on less. Um, fewer garbage trucks, and maybe only, maybe garbage trucks, but no, I don't know, filters. Maybe your filters will turn off, but the garbage trucks will still 
And so, excuse me if I use these analogies, I hope they help. Um, but the body is going to figure out how to get as much done as it can, no matter what you do. But if you give it more juice, if you get the inhale, if you get more oxygen in there, if you exhale more completely, then you're getting rid of more toxic waste and your body knows how to handle that. So that's the rocket science. That's part of the rocket science about this. So the components, so slow and deep as possible, moving the lower rib cage, breathing through the nose rather than the mouth. And the next thing we're going to look at is inhale to exhale ratio. Um, when I was a kid, I was a singer and a flute player. Well, let's do this first. So close your eyes for just a moment again. Just focus on your breathing. <coughs> and be as relaxed as you can while you're in a workshop with a bunch of other strangers. And count on the inhale, and then count on the exhale, so that you can compare those two numbers and see which is longer, your inhale or your exhale. Everybody get a count? Is your inhale longer? Is your, is your exhale longer? Okay, great. In other systems, and when you're at the end of yoga class, and when you're stressed out, increase your exhale. You're getting rid of more carbon dioxide, you're focusing the body. Um, when you're stressed out in, a, in yoga class, they always say, oh, make your breathing, make your exhale twice as long as your inhale. Yes, that's an excellent stress reduce, reducer. My inhale, my exhale used to be three times longer than my inhale. I was a flute player and a singer, and I prided myself on doing that. I used to practice to see how long I could squeeze it out. Um, and, and for playing flute and singing, it's a good thing to do. It's a fun thing to do. If you're swimming and if you like diving, that's an excellent practice to have. But on the street, every day, that's not such a good thing. Um, that's very difficult, uh, the emotional component that goes with that. And I'll demonstrate. Okay, so if you hear someone going, <sighs> Yeah. Um, so what kind of thinking goes with that? To me, I always think she's unhappy or like, yeah. resentful or doesn't enjoy what she's doing. Yeah. Big sigh. Big sigh. All kinds of... We'll be able to eventually be able to map this stuff. But generally, when one breathes like that, it's very likely that you're depressed or very sad. Um, and, and when we need to grieve, we'll be breathing like that. This is a helpful, good thing sometimes when it's appropriate. But as an everyday pattern, what would happen if you were constantly pushing everything out but only taking in as much? Not so good. Not so good for the body. And we'll be able to measure that eventually. We'll understand how about that. Oxygen. You wouldn't have enough oxygen. So even though you're exhaling a lot, you're just not replacing it. So the blood cells don't have the oxygen that they need to build tissue, to carry around nutrients, to um, let go of waste. Actually, your ATP, the, the chemical interaction that has to do with energy in your body, and I don't know enough about that to talk about it intelligently, but the whole oxygen energy packets that your cells need for energy. Just that's their food. Um, you're short. You're short. It's just you're not buying enough groceries. You just don't have enough. So, and inhale. On the converse side, 
If your inhale is longer than your exhale,